What's up you guys? It's Nicole and today I am going to be sharing how I edit and film my YouTube videos using iMovie in 2021. I am so excited to share with you guys everything that goes into planning and the actual creative process of creating my YouTube videos. There are so many different categories of things that we're going to talk about and so I'm here to just kind of share all my secrets and things that I've learned over making YouTube videos on and off. I've honestly made YouTube videos for probably about like five years now and I'm really excited to share with you guys all my secrets that I've kind of gathered over the years. So the first section is planning. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I do not plan every single one of my YouTube videos, but when I do plan them, I always like to use Notion. I have a section in my content creator Notion that I can fill in accordingly with whatever video that I'm planning out. If you wanna see how I made this template, you can check out my Notion tutorial, but today's video is a bigger one, so this is definitely one that I planned out. This is how I planned it out, nothing too fancy. Now another portion of planning that I do is my calendars. Now this is something that I use constantly, all the time. This is so important to me. I have two calendars on my Notion. I have a content calendar, which is just where I kind of touch base and put what days I'm going to be uploading things. And this is actually a hub for all my social media postings. So I do put YouTube videos, TikToks, Reels, and Instagram pictures on this. And this just kind of keeps track of when I need to post what when. Then I also have a filming calendar, which is kind of how I keep track of when I need to film something, when I need to edit it, and what days. I think that's going to take. It's so useful and it's so much better personally for me. I enjoy it more than using a paper calendar because I can change it around as I need to. So next is equipment. Now equipment is not necessarily like a touchy subject, but I understand that equipment for YouTube channels can get very pricey and not everyone has that. I have kind of been on both sides of having good stuff and not having the best equipment as well. I'll talk about all my essentials of what I use now and the things that I've used prior as well. So currently the camera that I use for all my videos, vlogging, sit downs, everything is what I'm filming on right now, which is the Canon G7X Mark II. I got this camera two-ish years ago, I believe. I, it was a graduation present for graduating college. I love it. I love how compact it is. I love how good quality it is. A little bit more on the expensive side, but I think if you're going to get one camera, I would prefer this over like the Canon Mark, whatever. The, I don't even know what the names of those are. Like the Canon 5D or whatever those are, or 8D or whatever they're on. I have no idea because I don't really care about those because they're so huge for the size that this is, the quality is incredible, and I think this is just very versatile. Now, along with that camera, you're going to need batteries. The Canon G7X comes with one battery, and this is it. Just a little gray, compact NB-13L battery, and the only thing that is difficult about this is that it dies really quick. So for any camera that you have, I would recommend buying backup and extra batteries. So off of Amazon, I bought a two-pack, so I have three batteries total. Would highly recommend buying extra batteries for your camera for whatever camera you use. Whether it dies quickly or not, it's always great to have some backups. Along with that, obviously you're going to need SD cards. This is a 32 gigabyte Ultra Plus SanDisk SD card. I prefer SanDisk. I just always have used those in my life, but I have two of the silver ones and then one of the gold ones, which is in my camera right now. They're all 32 gigabyte ones. I mean, I guess I could get the 64. The 32 work great for me. I just kind of shuffle all throughout them. Next, something that's so critical is a hard drive. I save all of my YouTube videos onto this hard drive. So one, I always have a copy of them so I don't have to delete them because they don't take up space on my laptop. And two, my laptop is so, it's so full right now. Like I can't even save a YouTube video to it if I wanted to. This is a one terabyte, I think it's a terabyte, one TB, yeah. So it's a thousand gigabytes. So this is just a super big, awesome hard drive. Next, I also have this little case where I keep my hard drive, my batteries, and my SD cards in, and I keep it in my desk drawer. It just kind of keeps all my stuff together, and then if I go to like a coffee shop and work, I have everything together. I know exactly where it is. Now, you're also going to want a tripod. I actually have, I think I have three tripods, but I've only purchased one of them. This is one of my older tripods. Um, this is actually my mom's that she's just had forever. 
my mom was always into home videos and picture taking and it works super well. So this is the one I've used for seriously years until just this past Christmas, I got a ring light tripod, which is what I'm using right now. I got this off of Amazon for Christmas while my boyfriend got it for me. It's really nice to have a standing ring light. Before I had my Canon G7X, I used one of my old Nikon big DSLR cameras to film my YouTube videos. And I did have a small ring light that attached to the lens on that, but having a big standing ring light is honestly a game changer. Now I have one more piece of equipment that is so important and that brings us to today's video sponsor, TIJN Eyewear. On TIJN Eyewear's website, you can find a handful of super cute sunglasses, prescription glasses, and they also have blue light glasses, which is what I will be talking about today. Now I can't pronounce the name of the model of these glasses, but I will put it on the screen. I absolutely love these blue light glasses, I got them in in gold and clear. Years ago, this is not something that I would have been able to use because I did wear regular glasses for so many years of my life. But now that I have contacts, I am so glad that I'm able to use blue light glasses. When I put them on, I can definitely tell a difference. I think these are super great quality glasses that have a lens that isn't too thick, but it's thick enough that you know that it's giving your eyes protection from your screens. As a YouTuber, having blue light glasses is so important when you're staring at a screen all the time for hours editing a video or even just on your phone you're always looking at screens and that can be so damaging to your eyes and your health so having these blue light glasses helps me so much honestly I just feel like I'm wearing normal glasses there's no difference besides the slight tint of the filtration in the lenses which is awesome because I know that it's giving me the protection that my eyes need these glasses are definitely something that I'm going to to incorporate into my daily life as I continuously edit videos, respond to emails, and plan out content for my channel. If you like the glasses that I have or you just want some blue light glasses in general, I would definitely recommend TIJ and Eyewear. They have so many different styles of blue light glasses. Anyone with any type of style is definitely going to find something that they like. I love them so much and I know that they're going to help me so much as I continue working on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much to TIJ and Eyewear for sending me these glasses and I would recommend them to everyone to use. So the first thing that I do when I import my clips into iMovie is I like to change the brightness and the temperature. Now there are a lot of people that will import a video and use the match color to kind of get a filter on it, but I find that isn't always super accurate. So what I've been doing recently is I move the brightness bar up just a smidge, just a little bit, tiny bit. And then I just move the temperature down on the blue side again, just a tiny bit and I feel that the coolness really just makes the video pop a little bit more makes it look a, bit, a little bit more aesthetic so I try to remember to do that at the very beginning before I start rough cutting the clip because I don't want to go through and have to do that on every single tiny clip so then we get to rough cutting which is something that everyone hates and it's very time consuming and it gets harder when you're doing videos like this where you're talking more to be honest I haven't found you know a way to hack this to make it much faster but my best tip for this is that you can use the command B shortcut to just chop it immediately rough cutting is just something that we're gonna have to do as a youtuber there's no way around it but but when you get through it and you get to the more creative side of editing, it's all worth it. Now, as you're going through and doing rough cuts, you can also add Ken Burn zooms and cropped zooms. These are two different ways to just add a little bit of spice into your videos. A Ken Burn zoom is when the video starts full sized and then you select a little rectangle that it's going to zoom into during the length of that clip. This is fun for like dramatic zooms and kind of a slower build up. And then you can also do a cropped zoom where you just select a section and when the clip starts, it's immediately going to jump to that cut. This is kind of more for exciting moments. If something is like bounce, 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 really fun. You can do cropped zooms. You know, you can go in a little and in a little more or just go in and out. Um, you can get really creative with these and it's such a simple way to add a lot of spunk to your videos. So now we get to the fun part of editing, which is overlays. 
Now, overlays can get kind of tricky with iMovie. There's just not a lot of options, not a lot of presets. And also, can we talk about how horrible the text options are? Honestly, that is the bane of my existence. I think that's why editing takes so long on iMovie compared to Final Cut. I could write a three page essay about how horrible that interface is, but we'll get into that in a second. So the first thing are green screens that you can use in iMovie. These can be aesthetic green screen overlays, you know, of like film crackles or little borders that look like pictures or Polaroids and just kind of add some aesthetic creativity into your videos, whether it's during the video or for an intro or something. You can find so many of these on YouTube for free. That's where I find all of mine. I just search aesthetic green screen overlays on YouTube. I have one favorite video that I've downloaded that has like 10 different overlays in one video. So I just kind of keep that imported into my iMovie and use it whenever I need it. I have like my basic set that I use all the time, but if I'm looking for something specific, I'll just Google that and download it. Now, next is text overlays. So the text like boxes that you can put that come on with iMovie, like the text section, you can't move them. So wherever they are, they're stuck. They're also stuck with whatever kind of effect that they come with. So most of them like fade in and out, which I don't want. Everything about them like sucks, to be honest. I hate it. So what I do is I use the app Fonto. Lifesaver, you guys, for iMovie users for editing, Fonto is a need. So on my iPhone, I go to Fonto and I have a preset saved on my project, which is just a green screen that is 1280 by 720, which is the size of a YouTube video. But I just go into there, type whatever I want, I typically use like Helvetica Bold Oblique and then sometimes I do shadows, sometimes I don't. And with this, this is just going to be font that just pops up on the screen because obviously with this, it's just a picture. But this is just what I use for like my titles and any kind of just overlay text that I like to use. And so I'll just save that and I will airdrop it to my laptop and put it on my video. And with green screens, you can't really move it around as well. You can crop it, but it's hard to like kind of get it in a different spot. So when I'm on Fonto, I just move it around on there. I typically put mine at the bottom, you know, kind of like a few spaces up from the bottom so it's not on the bottom bottom of the screen. And that's what I use to make my text captions. Now for more advanced overlays, I like to use Keynote. Keynote is an Apple app that can be found on iPad. I'm not sure if it's available on iPhone. Actually, I think it may be. I think it might be as well, but I do use Keynote on my laptop. So with Keynote, this is where you're gonna find like the typewriter effect that comes in, any like swoosh effects for zoom in. And the fun thing about Keynote is that this is not only for tech. You can have this effect for any item, any picture that you import into it. So this is a great way to also make intros and outros for your YouTube videos or some like different little overlays that aren't just text. So another thing that sucks about iMovie is that you can only have one overlay on top of a video at a time, which is another thing that makes editing on iMovie really time consuming. So you can't layer effects, but it is possible to do so. You just, honestly, you just have to save the video with the one overlay, import that file back in, and then put a different overlay over it again. So then it has like the two over it, but it's really just one overlay over the new video. There's honestly no way around this that I found. I don't think there's a way around this period. I mainly do this for my like aesthetic intros because I like to have like film grain over it and then sometimes I will do frame over it and then save that as well and then put text over it so I'll actually have like three layers of overlays but it's just another thing that like Final Cut versus iMovie like Final Cut wins. So now we're going to talk about transitions. The transitions that I use in my videos are pretty basic, but I will show you how I do them. The first one is a transition like this. So what I do is I just go into Fonto and I literally just make the screen a color. Save that picture, then go on, pick a different color, save that, and then you import it into iMovie. And I typically make the clips either about 0.1 second long or 0.2. And then over that little section, I put the sound effect golf hit one, which is a super typical iMovie transition sound that a ton of YouTubers use. And that gives us a little fun transition. The other transition that I use is like a slide over clip. So something like this, pretty typical. 
And so this is just a transition that comes with iMovie. You can find it in the little transition section. And I also put Golf Hit 1 over this. And these are the two that I typically use. Now, talking about sounds and music. Like I just talked about, there are some sounds in the iMovie library that people like to use. Golf Hit 1, like I said, is a typical transition noise. The only other sound effect that I really use out of the iMovie library is bottle cork. If you don't know, you've, you've heard this a billion times. This is a super popular sound effect and I use it for little text pop-ups on my screen just to kind of draw attention to them. And I go between this one and I recently downloaded just a regular mouse click. The mouse click is kind of my fave right now over bottle cork to be honest. To get sound effects like these, I literally just searched mouse click sound effect on YouTube, downloaded it on a YouTube to MP3 website and uploaded it into iMovie. Now for music, I love the website Hello Thematic. Hello Thematic is so great. It is a free website for royalty free YouTube music. For using songs from Hello Thematic, all you have to do is put a little link and some credit into your bio, which is so easy. And they actually just give you what you have to put in as a copy and paste thing. So you literally don't have to type anything. You just click it, paste, and you're done. And they have so many different songs. It's probably the most popular royalty free YouTube music library that's out there right now. So last but not least, we're going to be talking about intros and outros. Honestly, I don't have a lot to say about this because I personally, I don't have a like intro that I'm using on my videos right now. Now my outro is something that I made again with Fonto, which is actually funny that I actually use the iMovie text like preset boxes on my outro. So on Fonto, I literally just made a pink screen and then I just put the text over it, saved it as a PNG, and that was literally it. So I know for intros and outros, a lot of people use the app Vaunt. I actually just downloaded this the other day, so I haven't really utilized this app a lot, but I can see how helpful it'll be. You can put text on videos. But for the intros that I currently do, I really just make aesthetic intros, mainly for vlogs. This again, I really just like to take random clips from the video or b-roll clips that are aesthetic and then put some overlays on it you know my aesthetic green screens that's really what i do for intros i like i said i know a lot of people use vaunt i have also used keynote in the past to make some intros keynote is how i made my vlogmas intro and outro and i know also a lot of people on youtube have like pre-made intro and outro templates that you can search for so that's also something i would recommend if you just kind of want a pre-made one that's aesthetic but i would definitely recommend making your own because then you can kind of fit it to your channel's vibe better so that is about it for how i edit and film my youtube videos i hope you guys got some great tips and ideas from the way that i plan out and film and create my videos for this channel if you have any questions please comment them down below i will be so happy to answer or explain anything that you may be a little bit confused about also thanks again to tij and iwear for sponsoring this video i absolutely adore these blue light glasses i would highly recommend them thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video please give this video a like if you did enjoy it it means so much and also subscribe if you aren't yet i will see you guys in my next video i hope you have a great day or night wherever you are bye guys are you still there to delete what are you talking about